Hello guys, welcome back sa ating channel and welcome back again for another lecture and today we're going to be talking about the uh, topic on uh, sexual deviancy on your subject matter human behavior and victimology. So this is one of the last topic that we will be talking about under the unit 3 of the subject matter. So uh, for today's topic, we will be talking about the sexual deviancy. Now we have here the subtopic that we will be uh, discussing. We have uh, the definition of sexuality. We're going to be talking about also about the uh, concept of abnormal sexuality, classification of sexual abnormalities, and other sexual deviation. So without further ado, let us uh, jump into our first topic, which is the definition of the term sexuality. So it's important that we discuss first the, the concept of sexuality before we proceed since uh, ang, ang pinaka-topic natin dito is about uh, abnormal sexuality and the like. So, uh, sexuality is defined by our reference as the behavior associated with the relation between sexes and their respective reproductive organ. So, uh, maybe you are thinking that when we talk about sexuality, we are referring to uh, male or female sexuality, but that is not the case with regards to the term sexuality. Sexuality refers to the behavior. Uh, of a certain person in relation to his sexual preferences and in relation to his uh, reproductive, his or her reproductive organs. So, uh, when legally speaking, we only have two, uh, you know, male and female classification in terms of sexuality, but uh, psycho uh, on the psychological aspect, they have more broader understanding with regards to the term sexuality. Na? Pag sinabi na lang sexuality, ang tinitignan nito is the behavior. How uh, are you behaving in relation to your sexual preference and sexual orientation? So we, out uh, we actually have uh, this group of sexual classification based on sexuality. We have uh, heterosexual, na? You are a heterosexual when uh, your sexual preference is to that of your opposite uh, sex. Na? So if you are a male, then you are attracted to a female, then that is heterosexual. We have those individuals who are attracted to same uh, to, the, to persons who has the same sex as them. Uh, then uh, they are classified as homosexual and that includes yung, uh, gay and lesbianism. So those are considered as homosexual when their sexual preference is towards the person that they have the same uh, sexual orientation. Then we also have the bisexual. Bisexual are those individuals who are attracted to both men, uh, both male and uh, female, no? regardless of their uh, their. Uh, uh, sex na regardless of their sexual orientation their attraction is directed towards that of the uh, both sexual classification then lastly we have the asexual na? The, these are uh, individuals who have little uh, sexual excitement towards the opposite sex <coughs> so there are those individuals who are not a rose or who are not uh, interested into entering into some sexual relationship because they're not literally attracted to both sexes. So that is the classification with regards to sexuality. Now, uh, we have here the next topic that we will be talking about, the, uh, that is the abnormal sexuality. Uh, before we proceed, it's, it's important to establish first what is considered as a normal sexuality and uh, our references claim uh, our references claims that of course we have only heterosexual as a normal sexuality which means that uh, if a male is attracted to a female then that is uh, the normal sexual preferences other than that it's already considered as abnormal so heterosexual that is considered as normal sexuality now with regards to abnormal sexuality uh, the term abnormal sexuality refers to the sexual behavior that seeks stimulation or gratification by means 
than uh, the normal heterosexual norms. Okay, so our society only um, decides that heterosexual is the only normal uh, sexual preference that we should have. But of course, there are those individuals who has different perspective towards this. And uh, sadly, they are considered as abnormal or they are considered as person having an abnormal sexual preference or sexuality. Okay, so we have here a lot of classification of sexual abnormalities. We have uh, here, we will be discussing them by groups. So we have a classification of abnormal sexualities based on sexual partner. Uh, yes, yeah, sexual partner preference. We have uh, as to their in instinctual or uh, sexual urge. We also have the classification according to the mode of sexual expression or sexual satisfaction. And we also have the uh, classification of sexual abnormalities based on their uh, based on the parts of the body that they prefer when it comes to sexual activities and we also have a classification of sexual abnormalities based on their visual stimulus and we also have here based on the number of sexual participants in a certain uh, sexual activities so we will be talking about them one by one as i've stated these are group classification we, we are going to first talk about the classification of sexual abnormalities according to sexual partner. We have a lot of uh, examples for this, such as we have infantisexual. No? When we talk about infantisexual, uh, it is an abnormal sexual uh, preference which the partner that they desire, no? those yung mga taong nag nagsasuffer, or merong mga ganitong sexual uh, abnormalities, ang kanilang uh, sexual desire is uh, directed towards immature person or mainly yung mga uh, bata na tinatawag. So, yung, yun yung kanilang uh, preference when it comes to sexual partner. Mas gugustuhin na lang makipagtalik doon sa mga taong uh, hindi pa uh, nagmamature or musmus pa lamang compared to other sexual groups okay so what's the significance of all of these things pala no? we we are discussing this because uh, you know sexual abnormalities has the tendency to uh, give birth into criminality you know like for example uh, if we are going to if we are not going to understand the the difference of uh, the different uh, sexual abnormalities then we might consider them as moral or we might consider them as just you know normal or so so we have uh, some type of classification that are really considered as crime in our laws and in other laws of other countries. So we have, for example, the infantisexual, of course, that is uh, illegal and that is a crime as considered in our laws. Because if, if uh, you wanted to engage into sexual activities, then um, take into consideration that both of you, na, uh, your, uh, you and your sexual partner must already be at the age of majority before you can legally engage into such sexual activities and always uh, it should have been uh, in in compliance with the law and i'm talking about that there should be no force there should be no violence in in doing so so that it will not be considered as crime. So we have a lot of legal aspect that we should be talking about under all of these sexual activities and so on. And of course, uh, it's important to notice this different sexual abnormality so that we can provide solution or we can uh, do something about this so that it will not be normalized in, uh, in any other possible way, okay? So, infantisexual, we're talking about the sexual abnormalities of a certain person which uh, he desires or she desires. This is applied to both uh, sexes. No? Uh, there are those individuals, uh, I mean, it's these this sexual abnormalities are not only uh, present or observed among uh, male, but rather, uh, they are also observed in both sexes. So, there is no uh, discrimination with regards to the gender preference here. 
Basta ang tinitignan lang natin, pag sinabi natin ang isang tao ay infantisexual, ang kanyang sexual partner, ang kanyang desired sexual partner is yung uh, bata o musmus pa lamang. Then we also have yung tinatawag natin bestosexual. Uh, this is a sexual abnormali abnormalities which the sexual uh, urge or sexual preference of a certain person is directed towards yung tinatawag nating mga animal. So, mas prefer nila ang makipagtalik sa mga hayop compared or uh, uh, mas prefer nilang makipagtalik sa mga hayop kesa sa mga tao. I mean, there are those individuals who uh, had been reported of uh, abuse, sexually abusing animals uh, because they don't have choice. So, that's different, no? Kasi yung, yung sexual urge minsan is very powerful that it can make you irrational. So, if a certain person had a sexual intercourse to an animal na, uh, because he has no choice, then we cannot just consider that as uh, best sexual. The thing that we must consider uh, among all of this uh, classification of sexual urge is that even if they have choice, they just prefer uh, having the sexual partner over the normal sexual partner. So, kung baga, kung papiliin mo yung isang tao, kung saan niya gusto makipagtalik, isang babae o sa isang hayop, uh, mas pipiliin niya ang hayop uh, over that uh, the female sexual partner. So, ganun yung nature ng, uh, ng sexual abnormalities na ito. So, even if they have other choices no, of uh, sexual partner, mas, mas prefer pa rin nila yung kanilang Uh, yun nga, yung sexual preference nila. Sexual partner preference nila. Okay? So, best to sexual, uh, ang sexual desire is directed towards animals. And we have also the uh, called autosexual. It's a form of self-abuse or solitary vice carried out without the cooperation of another person. So, this is a sexual abnormalities which uh, a certain person prefers uh, doing yung tinatawag natin solitary vice, either uh, masturbation or ejaculation than engaging into sexual activities. So, yan yung tinatawag natin autosexual. Then, we also have gerontophilia. The sexual desire is directed towards uh, elder person. Na? Mas prefer nilang makipagdalik sa mga mas matatandang tao, na? Uh, mas matanda sa kanila kumpara sa ka-age nila or uh, slightly younger than them. Usually, we can consider that a person is uh, having that if the age is almost doubled. No? Pag sinabi natin uh, gerontophilia, at least man lang is double yung age. For example, a 24 years old is uh, engaging into sexual intercourse. Mas gusto niya makipagtalik sa, uh, mga, sa lalaki na mas, uh, do, uh, na mas matanda sa kanya higit ng Uh, either two times or double, uh, double ng kanyang edad, then that will be considered as gerontophilia. Okay? So, we also have necrophilia. The sexual desire is directed towards that of uh, corpse or dead bodies. Na? So, yung mga gustong makipagdalik sa mga patay na tao, yung mga hindi wala ng buhay, are considered as necrophilia. Na? Um, mas madali nilang ma-achieve yung sexual uh, orgasm nila if if they're going to follow their sexual desire according to sexual partner. So, this person having these things might have or might engage into sexual activities with with uh, normal sexual partner. For example, a necrophiliac, no? a, a, a person suffering from necrophiliac might engage into sexual activities with... Uh, you know normal sexual partner na no? yung mga buhay but then uh, hindi niya makukuha agad or mahihirapan siyang ma-achieve yung tinatawag nating sexual orgasm which is uh, kapag ginawa niya ito sa uh, dead bodies then definitely he will achieve the sexual orgasm na tinatawag natin that's why he preferred having uh, sexual activity or having sexual uh, yes having sex with a dead body is than uh, a normal sexual partner. Then we also have yung tinatawag natin incest. No? Uh, incest is uh, a type of sexual abnormalities wherein a certain person is, uh, his sexual urge is directed towards that of his uh, relative. No? 
yung mga tinatawag nating uh, relationship which by law cannot marry like for example cousins, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, siblings, yes, and uh, parent to children, yung mga ganong type ng relationship which is considered as illegal or immoral under our law. And any activities, sexual activities committed by these uh, groups are considered as incest. And that is, of course, not acceptable as uh, sexual uh, preference. So that is included under the classification of abnormal uh, sexuality or ab sexual abnormalities. Okay? So incest, if two persons having blood relation na, uh, are committing or doing sexual activities. Okay? Now, let us proceed to the next classification that we have. We have the classification of sexual abnormalities according to instinctual sexual urge. So, we have here the first type of uh, that uh, sexual abnormalities, yung tinatawag natin satiriasis. Na? Uh, satiriasis is uh, a sexual abnormalities observed among uh, male, wherein it is characterized by excessive sexual desire. Na? to to ex, you know excessive sexual desire to perform sexual intercourse so sobra sobra ang kanyang pagkahilig sa pakikipagtalik yan yung tinatawag nating satiriasis and you know uh, i don't know if if uh, there is really a standard uh, number of sexual activities that a certain uh, man can do in uh, in a day or in a week or so but uh, what is observable na yung labis-labis na na pagkahilig ng isang tao, ng isang lalaki sa pakikipagtalik, then that might be already considered as a sexual abnormalities and labeled as satiriasis. Um, in relation to that, we have naman yung sinasuffer, nagsasuffer naman yung women ng mga babae into that the same excessive sexual desire to have sexual intercourse at ang tawag naman natin dyan ay yung nymphomania. Strong sexual feeling of a woman to have a sexual intercourse. No? Then next classification is we have sexual anesthesia. No? Sexual anesthesia pertains to the absence of sexual desire, desire or arousal uh, during sexual act in women. No? So uh, ito yung sinasuffer ng mga babae that they don't uh, feel any sexual desire or orgasm during sexual intercourse. No? So, parang hindi sila nasasatisfy or rather, hindi, sila naka, na, hindi nila na-achieve yung sexual satisfaction whenever they do uh, sexual activities. And sometimes that's the reason why they become nymphomaniac. No? Uh, because it's hard for them to feel the arousal and feel the uh, sexual orgasm during sexual intercourse and that is sometimes the reason why they turn into uh, nymphomania no? and we have this paronia uh, it refers to the painful sexual act in women no? this uh, is characterized by you know excessive pain uh, that women are feeling during sexual intercourse it uh, could have something to do with dryness or, or uh, uh, what's whatsoever it's it's a medical term you know so we have uh, some disorders associated to this to to the medical field that might uh, explain the reason why a certain woman is feeling this during sexual intercourse and we also have vaginismus you no know? it refers to the painful spasm of the vagina during sexual act it's somewhat the same with the first thing that we discussed however this is directed to the uh, spasm no kumbaga is uh, naninigas yung uh, sexual organ ng babae during sexual intercourse and sometimes nagkakaroon tayo dito ng uh, yung paglalak ng sexual intercourse uh, paglalak ng uh, sexual organ which causes you know sometimes yung um, mga cases na kung saan is during sexual intercourse na i-interrupt because uh, naiipit yung uh, sexual organ ng lalaki doon sa sexual organ ni babae because of the spasm. Okay? So, those are the different classification of sexual abnormalities based on instinctual uh, sexual urge. Then, we also have the classification according to the mode of sexual expression or the way of sexual satisfaction. The first, there is yung tinatawag nating oralism. Oralism is uh, an uh, sexual abnormality wherein 
a certain person prefers the the use of mouth as a way of sexual gratification yung mga tinatawag dating fellatio, cunnilingus or anilingus na no, mas gusto nilang gamitin yung kanilang mouth to satisfy themselves no or to be satisfied in sexual activities than the normal sexual activities which is uh, you know ginagamitan ng uh, sexual organ ng uh, both sexes okay so oralism the use of mouth as a way of sexual gratification then we also have yung tinatawag nating sadomasochism uh, actually these are two different uh, sexual uh, di- disorder na no? meron kasi tayong tinatawag na sadism meron din yung tinatawag nating masochism sadism pertains to the uh, infliction of pain towards sexual partner in order to achieve the sexual orgasm na no? mas uh, nasasatisfy siya kapag nakakapag infliction ng pain sa kanyang sexual partner no so yan yung mga uh, ginagumagamit ng kung ano-anong mga uh, sexual toys uh, just to uh, satisfy himself no in uh, during the sexual activities and then the masochism it it's the otherwise mas gusto naman niya na mas gusto naman niya na, na nasasaktan siya na, in, na, na, na yung sexual partner niya is uh, sinasaktan siya in a different way para mas ma-feel niya yung yung uh, orgasm during sexual intercourse so kumbaga they usually go together no uh, sadomasochism no uh, so sadomasochism na it's it's uh, both the act of you know inflicting and uh, receiving uh, painful activities or painful acts during sexual intercourse. Pain or cruel acts as a factors for for gratification such as sadism and masochism. Yun nga. So, um, usually, no, pag, pag uh, ang isang sexual uh, sexual partner is a sadist, no, meron siyang, he is suffering from sadism, the other partner will often develop yung tinatawag natin masochism because uh, it is becoming if if they are a regular sexual partner no kung lagi-lagi silang nagtatalik at ganun yung ganun at ganun yung kanilang ginagawa there's a tendency that the other partner no habang yung isa nag inflict yung isa naman uh, nagde-develop na rin ng tinatawag natin masochism which is ina-enjoy niya na rin yung pag-receive ng pain na ini-inflict ng kanyang sexual partner therefore uh they coexist together na yung sadomasochism nating tinatawag we also have yung fetishism na it's a form of sexual perversion in which the uh, real or fantasized presence of an object or bodily part is necessary for sexual gratification na ito na yung mga uh, tao na mahilig magnakaw ng mga uh, garments, undergarments like panty at bra and then yun yung kanilang ginagamit para uh, mas masatisfy sila. No? Kasi parang uh, they can feel the presence of the, the, their uh, imagined sexual partner through that object. No? So usually undergarments ang mga kinukuha nila and uh, yun yung kanilang pinagpapantasyahan uh, during the performance of probably autosexual, no? either masturbation or ejaculation, at yun yung kanilang uh, sexual preference, yun yung kanilang way of expressing their sexual uh, urge no? through uh, the different uh, objects that are connected to a certain person that they desire so much. No? So, yan yung mga... Uh, gan- mga kumbaga nanunungkit ng panty and whatsoever. Okay? Then we also have the classification of sexual abnormalities based on to the parts of the body that they desire. Now we have sodomy. It's a sexual act performed through uh, the insertion of the penis to the uh, to the anus of their sexual partner. So it's more sometimes performed through uh, by those uh, engaging into homosexual relationship and so on. Na yung sodomy na tinatawag sexual act. Uh, done through the insertion of the male sexual organ to the anal orifice of uh, their partner. 
Now, we also have yung tinatawag nating uranism, an act in which the sexual gratification is attained by uh, fingering, fondling, the breasts, licking parts of the body, and etc. So, other than insertion of the sexual organ to the sexual organ of the sexual partner, no? Alimbawa, um, the, their sexual activities is mostly focused on, on uh, you know, insertion of the finger to the uh, vagina of the uh, their sexual partner and uh, licking the the parts of the body and so on. So you you can imagine that it's also yung yung sodomy kanina is mostly performed by uh, homosexual, specifically yung gay relationship. No? And uranism is mostly performed by uh, homosexual pa rin, but the lesbian uh, relationship. No? Yung mga ganong type ng relationship. Yung woman to woman. Okay? So, we have also yung frottage na tinatawag. Frottage is a sexual gratification that is characterized by compulsive desire of, of, of one person to rub his sexual organs against uh, the body parts of another person. No? So, meron yung mga cases na ganito na kumakala sa social media wherein uh, before pandemic, ano, marami kasing ganitong nangyayari na nakukuha na ng camera and so on. Na like sa mga public transportation na uh, siksikan, there are those individuals na nag enjoy in, in that uh, kind of situation. Why? Because uh, while... In, in that situation, habang nandun sila sa situation na siksikan sila, may mga pasimple doon na uh, kinikis-kis nila yung kanilang sexual organ uh, doon sa mga uh, tao no? uh, na nakakasalamuhan nila o nakakadikitan nila and they are receiving sexual satisfaction through that. And that sexual abnormalities is known as frottage. Okay? And we have yung tinatawag nating partialism which is a form of sexual deviation in which a person has a specific affinity to a certain parts of the female body. Uh, dito naman sa partialism, ang sexual desire ng sexual partner niya is na-achieve na niya through focusing on a certain part of the uh, body, the female body. So, it's either uh, baka ang talagang uh, ang nakakapag pa uh, trigger sa kanya na magkaroon ng sexual orgasm is uh, probably the knees, na? probably the underarm, uh, underarm, the uh, armpit, or or other part. Basta nakafocus lang siya sa isang part ng katawan ng sexual partner niya at doon siya mas uh, ginaganahan or nagkakaroon ng sexual uh, satisfaction kung doon yung kanyang uh, pinagtutuunan ng pansin. And tawag natin dyan is of course, partialism. Then we also have the classification as to visual stimulus. So we have yung tinatawag natin voyeurism. Voyeurism is a form of sexual perversion na naman. That is characterized by a compulsion to covertly look at a person undress or perform other activities. So yan yung paninilip na tinatawag. Na? And... Uh, the same thing, there are a lot of cases like this na, na kung saan, especially uh, sa boarding house scenario, uh, setting, no? kung, uh, before the pandem pandemic, na kung saan yung mga uh, rooms ay nilalagyan ng butas no? to, para gamitin ito sa paninilip. No? And uh, in other cases na kung saan may mga ganitong nangyayari that there are some hidden CCTVs in bathrooms, in public bathrooms sometimes, no? in, in uh, private uh, you know, rooms, like kahit nga doon sa mga uh, commercial establishments, like, like sa mga bilihan ng dapit. Sometimes there are hidden cameras doon sa mga dressing room na, na kung saan is intentionally nilalagay ng, ng owner para... Uh, ma-record, makapanilip ng mga customers na nag address nagpapalit, uh, and, so, and so on. So, those types of abnormalities is known as voyeurism. Yung covertly, no, secretly na paninilip, no, pag-o-observe sa mga uh, tao na nag-a-undress, uh, nag nagpapalit ng damit, or uh, even yung mga nagpe-perform ng other activities aside from what I mentioned. So, ang tawag doon is voyeurism. Of course, that's a crime, no? That's a crime. 
And then we also have the Scoptolalia. Uh, and then we also have the Mixos Copia, or uh, in other term that is known as the Scoptophilia. No? It's a sexual perversion wherein the sexual pleasure is, achained, uh, is attained by watching couple undress or during their uh, acts of sexual intimacy. So this is different from voyeurism because under voyeurism is they just perform normal tasks like uh, changing clothes, taking a bath, and whatsoever. Dito naman sa mixoscopia is uh, their sexual part, uh, sexual urge, sexual satisfaction is attained through watching couples performing uh, sexual activities na, uh, do, during sexual intimacy. So, mas trip naman nilang panoorin yung mga couples having sexual uh, intimacies at doon sila nagkakaroon ng sexual satisfaction. Of course, that is uh, also considered as uh, sexual abnormalities. You know, the, the problem with regards to this is there are a lot of, of uh, things online that, that caters to satisfy all of these sexual abnormalities. No? Maraming mga website, social media website that nag-cater yung mga ganitong activities such as, and, and dyan din lumalaki yung kaso, tumataas yung kaso ng tinatawag nating uh, cyber pornography, uh, cyber sex, no? and, uh, and other similar activities online. And that is the reason why no, nag-exist ito because there is a demand coming from those individuals who have sexual abnormalities no, to cater those uh, needs of the those person who are suffering from sexual abnormalities. Marami nang naglabasan ng mga website or uh, other social media platform just to cater for them. And that is sometimes the reason bakit tumataas yung mga kaso natin ng mga sexual abuses and uh, other sexual related offenses okay we also have the classification of sexual abnormalities according to uh, the number of participants we have in tinatawag natin froilism froilism is a sexual perversion in which three persons participate in sexual orgy na yung term natin dito is yung tinatawag natin threesum wherein uh, the sexual activities is performed by three individuals. It's either dalawang babae, isang lalaki, or dalawang lalaki, isang babae. So, mas may mga tao na mas na-achieve nila yung kanilang sexual desire in performing such act than uh, having yung regular numbers of participants which is, which is at least two. Di ba? Kasi ang normal sexual activities naman is performed by uh, partner. So, dalawa lang sila. But there are those persons who are not satisfied with that and they don't receive much sexual satisfaction if they're just doing that. So, they add additional party involved in that sexual activities to make them uh, more sexually satisfied. So, ang tawag dyan is froilism. Uh, and still, that is considered a sexual abnormalities. Then, we have yung tinatawag natin pluralism. Uh, pluralism is a sexual uh, abnormalities wherein the sexual activities is performed by a group. Uh, if that's more than three already, then that is already pluralism na tinatawag natin. Uh, usually, it's performed by a group. And sometimes, the problem with regards to this is it's associated with vices or drugs or uh, to make it worse. No? So, pluralism ang tawag natin dyan when, when, uh, sexual, uh, when a sexual activities is performed by a group of person. No? And uh, sometimes we call this the sexual festival na tinatawag or orgies to, to make it uh, more common to everyone. Sexual orgies. Then lastly, we have here the other sexual deviation. We have three. We have cop, uh, coprolalia, now a form of sexual deviation that is characterized by the need or the need to use uh, obscene language in obtaining sexual orgasm. Da? So, yung mga gumagamit ng mga sexually insightful words like uh, fuck, like uh, uh, marami pa yan, if you can think of. Da? So, they tend to uh, they, they prefer to use this uh, sexual uh, sexually 
motivated words to achieve more sexual satisfaction. No? Ang tawag natin dyan is coprolalia. Okay? Then we also have yung donwanism na tinatawag. Donwanism is a form of sexual deviation that is characterized by uh, the promiscuity to uh, sedak many women as part of a male sexual career. No? Ito yung mga uh, tao na mahilig uh, mangakit, mga lalaki na mahilig mangakit, mar- mahilig magka- magkipag- uh, uh, pumasok sa mga relationship, maraming relationship just to prove their uh, manliness probably and and so on. So that's that's the characteristic of those persons suffering from donwanism. Ito yung mga tao na gusto nila na marami silang asawa, gusto nila na marami silang sexual partner, gusto nilang marami silang uh, maakit na mga babae and that is of course a sexual deviation. They're just, you know, satisfying themselves in terms of uh, in terms of how they perceive themselves, they, it probably makes them feel better if they achieve such thing. No? Donwanism, ang tawag natin dyan. And lastly, we have the exhibitionism or yung tinatawag natin indecent exposure wherein some people shows their genital organs, na yung, yung mga sexual uh, organs nila to public. And this makes them uh, sa- f- sexually satisfied. Na, nasasatisfy sila pag ginagawa nila ito. So, ito yung mga taong biglang naghuhubad sa biglang naghuhubad sa uh, public places, da? Pinapakita nila yung mga yung sexual organ nila sa mga tao, na? And of course, this is a crime, na? Eh, but for them, it is a way of expressing themselves and it's a way of satisfying uh, themselves sexually, na? So, they are doing these things. Yung tinatawag nating exhibitionism or indecent exposure. So, all of those things that we discuss are considered as sexual abnormalities and most often times or all of them are actually considered as a crime in our uh, law. Not only in our law but in the law of other nations also. Okay, so I do hope you learned something from this very brief lecture. If you have questions relative to this, kindly comment them, uh, comment them down on the comment section and I will try to get back to you soon. That's it for today. See you guys on the next lecture. Bye-bye.